The first quarter's Star Citizen patch of 2022 is finally upon us, bringing with it a few changes and features that just may convince you not to skip this next installment. Hey guys, I'm Morphologist, and welcome back. With CIG's announcement of their shift to focusing on the single-player campaign Squadron 42 this year, the outlook for Star Citizen in 2022 hasn't been that great for the Persistent Universe, and 317 doesn't deviate much from what we expected, being a reasonable step forward in the form of a small patch with some big changes and just a few new features, some of which not actually listed on the roadmap. And trust me when I say that those are the juicy ones. So in this video, I'll take you through the visual updates, gameplay changes, and then finally the exciting new features in 317 in this latest installment of the best features. So sit back, relax, and if you enjoy this video and you think I deserve it, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button to show your support. In 317, Star Citizen takes the moodiness of Hurston up a notch by adding clouds to the entirety of the planet, bringing us yet another step closer to that Blade Runner experience in Loreville. As per the lore, the clouds are kinda dirty, and that's because Hurston is a very polluted planet that the Hurston Dynamics company has been using for weapons testing, so don't breathe too deeply when you visit. Under the hood for clouds, they also fixed a bug with scattering queries, which was previously worked around. That scattering, by the way, is what gives clouds their visual density, and so this should make it run hopefully a little bit better as the code's a bit more clean. Now, while clouds certainly aren't gameplay, they are something that adds to the immersion factor of the game, and it certainly does make an impact on prospective players and existing players when they want to visit a location like this. And so for that, it's a pretty good feature, and it's definitely worth checking out when you hop in 317. But clouds aren't the only improvement to Hurston this time around. We're also getting Maria Pier of Heart, a new hospital location in the city of Lorville, which is great news for those of you looking to live in a dystopian society ruled by a possibly evil corporation. In my view, the teams responsible for this location, including the lore team, have done a phenomenal job of making this place feel incredibly atmospheric. It's well worth visiting, especially for the hilarious announcements that you'll hear from time to time while you're visiting. Just listen to this little gem. Sure, we all want to be able to work longer hours, but overdosing on stimulants is not the answer. From a higher chance of accidents and mistakes to a decrease in performance and quality of work, Hurston Dynamics reminds employees that too many stints slows you down. Or how about this one, which hilariously played right after the last one? Feeling ready to get back to work? Ask your doctor or pharmacist how to taper your medication dosage to help you return to the job in record time. Screenshot junkies rejoice because clouds aren't the only addition to 317 for the visual side. We also are getting our first iteration of rivers on Microtech. It's only one river for now, but you can find it by heading 205 from New Babbage at a distance of about 430 kilometers. It's going to be in the first patch of Grinia spot on your way in this direction, so if you go past that, you've already passed the river. The river is currently only around 10 kilometers long, so it's not even that big. Instead, CNG are using this new river to test its performance, its visuals, and to get feedback from us about how we feel about the experience. That way they can implement those changes before it's propagated across the planet and causes problems. We can probably expect to see rivers all across Microtech, on Hurston, and perhaps on a few moons in the Stanton system. And certainly we can expect to see them in the Pyro system, in the form of not just water, but lava eventually as well. But like all planet tech that they've introduced in the past, the first iteration isn't always perfect. It's definitely got some flaws and doesn't look realistic in some areas. This, I'm sure, is going to be addressed through more iterations going into future patches, and even before the release to the live environment later this month. Like Clouds, though, there isn't a whole lot of integral gameplay experiences associated with this location just yet. There are no missions here, and there's certainly nothing to do related to the river. Though it makes a nice backdrop to do hand mining or to find mineables on the ground, which you can locate. In my travels, I found a Quantanium Rock. One way you might use to travel this area is via a hovercraft like the Dragonfly or the new one from Consolidated Outlands, as in 317 you can also float above water in hover vehicles, which wasn't a thing before. I guess hoverboards can work on water. If you got that reference, you're my people. I actually found it makes for a really exciting racetrack, so maybe we'll do that in a future stream. Check me out on Twitch, by the way. 
In Cianchi's ongoing efforts to improve the visuals of the game, they've improved the faces all around. Now they're higher textured and look much more realistic, including the eyeballs, which now have a bit of a moisture effect to them to give them an even more realistic feel. Unfortunately, hair still remains to be the old version, which really stands out like a sore thumb now against the much higher quality facial textures. Cianchi, can we please get some more hairstyles of higher quality? Please. Oh, and they also removed some eye colors and hair colors, unfortunately. I, I don't like that change. I think they should have kept the weird ones like red and purple. Some smaller changes include ASOP terminals, making a switch over to building blocks, which means that you can see what other people are doing and can even mess with them. <laughs> this guy literally had no idea what was going on. Luckily, it doesn't have any consequence because I can't actually pull their vehicles out. It just cancels what they're doing. Emotes also had a little bit of an update, so we now have some more dancing animations and some other emotes, so you can check those out. Clinics have also seen a bit of a visual upgrade, but more practically speaking, they now have more beds, which means that for events in the future, you'll have a place to spawn reliably. Unfortunately, in the last event for Ceno Threat, there were a lot of people who were getting stuck because there weren't enough beds at the Mike L1 Lagrange point. Of course, though, how could I not talk about the highlight feature of 317, the coffee shop vendor? Kidding, of course. Which does seem to work pretty well. This was an onboarding task by a new member of CIG, and so it wasn't really meant to be a big highlight feature. It was just something kind of cool that they added. And unfortunately, it's only in Area 18, so if you want to experience this, you'll have to head on over there until they add more, hopefully in future patches. But now let's move on to some of the more significant changes, such as the reduction to vehicle detection range, which should give ground vehicles just a little bit more protection against hovering ships. And netcoding has also been improved for player versus player interactions, which has made the NPC interaction experience a little bit more janky. That's because the locations of NPCs and players are being updated a lot more frequently, and sometimes the server can be a little bit, a little bit strange. But it hasn't been too bad in my experience. It's still completely playable if you're going up against NPCs. This should make a big difference in fighting massive player-to-player -player desync, which resulted in really aggravating PvP experiences where you think you're hitting somebody and you're in the right position, when in fact they may be behind you and you just don't see them. They've also brought cluster missiles back, which now should work pretty well. Star Marine has also gotten some love. It now works a lot better and you're able to actually get in matches and have them continue on to another round after they're completed. And the scoreboard is also now improved via, I think, the building block system. And one of the better improvements here is to grenades, which now will no longer suck back to your hands and blow you up after you've thrown them, which was a big problem before. To be honest though, I'm still highly traumatized and don't entirely trust them. Medical gameplay has thankfully also gotten some love, as it wasn't entirely that great for the first two patches. Players should now reliably go into a down state once they've been killed, allowing you to be rescued by a friend, whereas before you just go straight to a hospital, or to prison if you're a criminal. Injuries should also now more reliably happen, although I've not personally experienced that just yet. Unfortunately, the medical beacons still after six months don't work. Hopefully they get that sorted in this PTU cycle because it's going to be hard to motivate people to save others when there's no reward. 317 also introduces physicalized components for both weapons and regular ship components, which means that you can now transport them from station to station, but more importantly, when a ship explodes, there's a chance that you can nab one of those components off the wreck. This I think is going to tie into salvage later down the line. But now I want to introduce you guys to some of the more significant features in 317. First, and my most favorite of them, are the changes to the inventory and the loot pool systems. In the past, I complained that things have little value, as there's no such thing as rarity, and you can pretty much buy everything in the game right away. CNG have begun to address this by removing some of the armor that we used to have in shops, leaving them now in the loot pool only or to be looted off of NPCs. On the weapon side, you can now only get pistols, SMGs, shotguns, and some assault rifles, leaving light machine guns, some assault rifles, rocket launchers, grenade launchers, and rail guns all in the loot pool. The idea being that bringing more powerful weapons to a fight is gonna have a little bit more risk. 
These changes, I think, are mostly positive. However, there are some downsides. For one, it's now harder to run events because it's gonna be more difficult to get a hold of some types of weapons. But for me, I think it's most concerning that now we have no access to rocket launchers, making ground forces even weaker against air targets. At least before, we could threaten them with man pads. Now we've got nothing unless we find something in a loot box. I really hope they address this in some way through the reputation system or bring it back to be able to be purchased in maybe a unique or hidden location. The loot boxes that you can find around the world also now have a relationship to what's in them. White boxes, for example, will often contain things like food, resources, and mineables, such as Head Knight, which is extremely valuable and definitely worth picking up. I made over 100k in just Had Knight from the run that you saw. I I'm talking a single run, making this potentially one of the most profitable things that you can do in 317. For armor, weapons, and ammo, look to the red boxes, or potentially the green army boxes which are also about the same length. Perhaps even better though, every single sub-item up until last year is now also lootable in boxes, so things like this golden multi-tool are things that you can find. And after you've filled up your ship and your backpack with gear, you can go sell it with the new sell tab that you can now find in virtually every single shop around the verse. However, there are some limitations. Certain shops will only buy certain things. So for example, an armor shop will only buy armor. However, there are some shops that buy and sell multiple different types of items, and so those may be a better bet for you to check out. However, as great as it is to have a very important part of an MMO finally functional in Star Citizen, the actual act of looting people like NPCs and players is an extremely frustrating and time-consuming process, some of it down to just the game's design at present. For example, there's no container or backpack I can fit armor into, so I have to move these bodies one by one into my ship in order to drag them into my ship's inventory. But that process is even further marred by missing basic inventory features like stacking, marquee selection, move all, and quick move options. That leaves you needing to move items one by one in a very unintuitive way, where some items can't be removed until others are first. For example, you can't remove this guy's chest piece before you first remove the ammo and weapons attached to it, with no indication for that being the reason why you can't remove the chest piece. CIG did try to make looting a little bit easier on us by allowing us to purchase content containers that we can store stuff in, but unfortunately these containers don't store anything more than pistols and helmets. They can't fit in stuff like armor or weapons, and so it leaves it somewhat useless. You might as well just bring more backpacks. Hopefully we get some bigger boxes to buy. But it gets just a little bit worse after that. I'm not sure if this is a feature or a bug, but I couldn't actually sell from my ship's inventory. And so for me to be able to sell all the armor I just spent 20 minutes looting, I have to transfer it now one by one into the local inventory of this station in order to sell it. Honestly then, that makes looting armor off of people just a waste of time. You're better off looting the little accessories and rocks that you can get out of the white boxes versus trying to grab bodies, because you're going to absolutely kill your money-making efficiency by trying to do so. But I digress, let's move on to other features. Yet another facet has been added to the mining gameplay in the form of mining gadgets. Like the modules added earlier last year, they modify the properties of the rock to allow you to more easily mine them, in cases where rocks may be too unstable or have really high resistance. They are very expensive though, so luckily they are reusable if you retrieve them after you've mined the rock, so don't forget to do so. Unfortunately, these devices don't seem to work right now in BTU, so I can't show you guys any footage of it actually working. So instead, here's some low-quality, upscaled 1080p footage I got from Star Citizen's official post. This is how it's supposed to work, and eventually will once it goes live. Unfortunately though, these don't seem to work with small rocks like with the ROC mines. 317 is also introducing a much-anticipated ship, the first in a long series of haulers, the Hull A from MISC. Distinguished by its unique transforming hull that can deploy outboard cargo mag pads, which allows it to carry a great deal more cargo than its competitors that have to transport cargo internally. This also has the benefit of being able to be loaded faster with the fully realized cargo refactor coming later in Star Citizen's development. The downside, of course, is that you're exposing your cargo and it can therefore be more easily damaged, destroyed, or even stolen. So be careful out there, haulers. The Hall A will get a fully dedicated architect reviews later, so make sure you're subscribed for that. It really is a ship that sets a new standard for ship designs in Star Citizen, so be sure not to miss it. 
And on the subject of ships, some that were only previously available on the website for purchase are now available in-game for in-game money. A list should be up on the screen, although it does seem that we're still missing the Ares and Ion, strangely, from Crusader. And finally, after a long time waiting for this feature to come online, we're getting Quanta in 317, which is a big deal for Star Citizen's universe. If you don't know what this is, it's basically a background universe simulator that's simulating hundreds of thousands of NPCs to dynamically adjust events and prices for commodities. Initially, for its first release, it will only affect the price of repair, quantum fuel, and hydrogen fuel. Although I suspect it may also be affecting some other things like the service beacons which seem to be a lot more frequent in 317. If you guys want to learn more about this, it's fascinating. You should check out any of Tony Z's talks over on Star Citizen's main channel or you can check out my summary of CitizenCon from last year. Congratulations Tony Z and team. I hope that this works out and that you guys can implement more of this going into the next patch. And it kind of makes sense that it affects fuel because of the next feature they added in 317. 317 also gives the ugliest ship in Star Citizen, the Starfarer, a real purpose with the first new profession in years, refueling. The Starfarer's individually detachable tanks can now carry either hydrogen fuel or quantum fuel depending on the preference of the tanker. However, the Starfarer's refinery is still not operational, so unfortunately it won't be able to create its own fuel just yet. To accommodate this new profession, the refueling, repair, and rearm screen for the Moby Glass has gotten a bit of a rework, allowing you now to individually fill tanks on your ship and to be able to select how much fuel you actually buy. As with the new Quanta update, sometimes fuel can be pretty expensive, especially during events. The refueling process is actually a lot more developed and interesting than I had originally anticipated. What you do is you pull up to the back of a Starfarer and request docking permission. If they allow you to dock, you dock with the refueling arm and you can begin the refueling process. The owner of the refueler can then dictate the price of the quantum or hydrogen fuel that the individual docking wants to purchase. The operator will be responsible for deploying the boom, opening the nozzle, and selecting which tank it should flow from. The operator can also regulate the flow rate, allowing you to fill a ship faster. However, if you fill it too fast, bad things happen. Spilling highly flammable quantum fuel next to exhaust ports isn't exactly the wisest thing you can do. So while 317 isn't the biggest patch ever to be released for Star Citizen, it still contains some good stuff in there that I think is definitely worth checking the game out for again. And I also think that it's possible that some of these features will play a role in upcoming events they have yet to announce. So stay tuned for that. Otherwise guys, thanks for watching. I've been Morphologist. See you out there in the verse. Dance off. Dooch, 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 dooch.